Howdy, welcome back. In today's video, we will be completing the flap system and baggage door. But first, we will address our and air fuel valve, which came with the defective O-ring. Boo! Enjoy! When we first received the fuel valve, it didn't have screws permanently installed, so Austin took the elbow fittings off. After taking one side off, he discovered that the O-ring had a chunk taken out of it, so he reached out to And Air, got the O-ring info, and found replacement O-rings on McMaster. The part number is here on the screen for future reference in case you need it. And we also got some extra O-rings in case we need them. Now, back to building. I don't even know when I did these. I probably got these prepped three or four months ago. Uh, one of those projects where you can kind of pick through and at least get stuff prepped to go in and then of course never put it in. I already got these uh, UHMW bushings trimmed down so they came originally rectangular like that shape there. Next steps involve actually getting this assembled, or partially assembled here, and then getting it put into the plane. Anyone at Vans Engineering has watched this video. Um, whoever did this section on the flap or planned this corner, you're cruel, my friend. It's just so hard. Uh, it's hard to get a camera angle, but you gotta get deep inside of here. There's a flange in the way right here, preventing you from really getting any meaty arms or hands in there. It is a, a pain. If you have um, little humans, this would be a good time to put them to use. That side over there took me, I don't know, a good probably two hours last night just to do the two bolts inside of that channel on that side. So we're gonna get to this side. Uh, but man, again, Vans, if you're watching this, uh, I'd like to chat with whoever, whoever decided to put these here. assistant here helping me. I've been trying to get him to uh, crank those bolts down for me, but he's not focusing. We're going to work on focus, on uh, finishing the job. Uh, but right now, he's still definitely a work in, uh, a work in progress. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Let's see something cool. So, watch this. Let's see cool magic trick. 
fat blue wire, flat brown wire, depending on which way you put it, it either goes in or out. Oh! Isn't that cool? That's awesome! That's cool! She thinks it's cool! to push with the gun, uh, push with my finger, which you can see that nail start to kind of crease in the middle. I'm gonna push with my finger and then keep light pressure on the bar, trying not to separate the sandwich, trying not to bend the material. It is really flimsy, slow moving, uh, so I probably won't film the whole thing, but it's tricky. Bag is yours ready. This is pretty stressful. Um, just trying to maintain, you see I have a lot of duct tape on it, um, but trying to maintain this 1 16th inch gap all the way around it. So you'll see I do have one of my um, spacer blocks there taped in place so that way it stays there. Everything else I taped since then. Um, I have the hinge taped up uh, because these hinges have slop in them. So follow the instructions, made the slop go up and that way when we match drill it and it goes to settle, it doesn't droop back down. Uh, so all this I think is ready. So I don't think I can attempt this solo. So I think I'm gonna try to see if I can find Amanda. Hi. So this riveting was pretty straightforward other than when it came to the top portion here, it definitely got really tight. The last one up top, I did not attempt to bucket a sandwich of material in this area and it is, um, I guess it makes it much more likely to bend the material over the edge of that sandwich. So I did not even attempt it and then also chose to use a couple of Cherry Max rivets on top here. I think it was a dash three and a dash five, uh, but if you're building, highly recommend you won't be able to see it on the camera, but there's a rivet depth gauge for Terry Max rivets. Highly recommend getting one of those. You also see all those blue bags on the right side, all those aircraft spruce bags. That's every size of Cherry offered, as well as a couple of common sizes in the oversized 
Trey Max ribbon. So it's handy to have all that on hand. I was able just to find the exact size, go over to the one I needed, uh, a plethora of extra Trey Max rivets. Because in this location here, for instance, I don't know how you would even get in there. I don't know how you'd even get to them. Here's the wife. We're gonna go ahead and complete this baggage door. You'll see the inside's primed. I kind of scuffed a little bit of the corners when I was in here with a bucking bar riveting on the front portion. So I figured, hey, I'll prime the inside. While I was at it, I scuffed up the inside of the skin here. Prime that. I, primer, don't talk to me about primer. Don't ask me questions about primer. But um, the inside, not priming. She put her favorite verse on the inside of it. So I'll start riveting that together and we'll get it fitted to the plane here. have this side panel ready to go to close out this side next to the baggage door. Um, you'll see I did choose to put a piece of conduit in here. I have it going uh, from just underneath the left seat armrest up and around and into the top portion and I was able to kind of squeeze it down a little bit and get it to fit into that gap. So I'm not sure if I'll ever use that to wire anything over here but I want to leave my options open and figure there's a uh, a good spot to run a piece of conduit because that will actually end up getting hidden if I do choose to run anything here. Uh, another panel goes down and over so it would be nice and hidden up this left side. The right side won't have that same opportunity because uh, the right side doesn't have a panel going all the way up to this sidebar here. Only the left side. So that's why I did that. The other thing that I did do, that hole right there is the location hole for the step bolt that uh, Vans recommended doing where we drilled when we put the step in drilled a long uh, with a long drill bit up uh, there that way we know where that bolt is in case we ever need to service it in the future change it out tighten it whatever um, but just like on the other side there i did choose to kind of rough eyeball approximate where the hole was uh, you'll see i was a little bit off there uh, but i know now where the hole is i'm not sure if i would ever utilize this if i had to get to that step bolt it would require really cutting out a, a large chunk of this piece here uh, maybe I'd, if I got to that point and needed to get access to that bolt, maybe run that by van say, hey, I have access or I know where the hole is. Can I notch this whole panel out right here? They may say yes, they may say no, but I figured might as well while I'm here, while I have access to it visually, um, get it located onto this thing here. I'm going to call it quits for the night. Tomorrow, we'll be ready to rivet this on. It's going to get nut plates down the left side here and then some solid rivets up this side, and then we're doing pop rivets down the side, I think LP4-3s all the way down and around, and that will finish up this section for the dinosaur. Baggage door is done. I'm happy with it. Um, I tried to do a little bit of tweaking, trying to get this whole thing to match the side perfectly. I don't think it's ever going to be absolutely perfect, but I'm happy with where it's at now. Um, I have this hardware installed. Can't quite remember when I picked this hardware up for the door lock. I did not buy the baggage lock um, from Vans. Uh, my understanding is it's a basic cabinet lock, and I think I got this at Oshkosh. Uh, but uh, just a standard lock, just a regular cabinet lock with a little bit of modification on, on this guy here just to shorten it to make the throw not interfere with the material. Uh, but it works. I'm happy with it. Um, the other modification that I did do... The split hinge modification here, what this allows you to do, and I did not come up with this, um, but what this allows you to do is pull each of these pins out, kind of like with the seats. Um, pull each pin out and allows this whole door to come off. I can take one of these, pull that out, take the other one, pull it out the opposite direction, and this whole door will come off, uh, which is nice. So a lot of other people do the method of uh, drilling a hole and kind of having this latch into the side here. Uh, and then some people safety wire it in place. I chose to do a different method with, with a piece of thin aluminum here. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's like 025, 032. No, probably not 033, probably, probably 025. But anyways, took a thin piece of scrap aluminum and heavily fluted each side then the nut plate is not countersunk but this material is dimpled so this dimple in this piece here kind of makes it a little bit of a, uh, a standoff and prevents those hinge pins from kind of torquing and really forcing down because you'll see they are coming off of that hinge material there 
So I really don't need to sunk, sink them down into the side of the frame. Really just there to retain these pins and keep them from wanting to wiggle out, which this is going to accomplish that mission well. Um, so I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna call it quits here. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in whatever next video comes up. Adios. Alrighty, this is an iPhone recording because I'm actually still editing the other video that you probably last saw inside the house with the camera. Anyways, all that's inside. So this is on iPhone, but this is too exciting not to share. This what are we sharing, Amanda? We are sharing that the air conditioner, at least the fan piece of it works, and we tested low, medium, high speed, and it is actually super powerful. Like we weren't sure what it was going to feel like, or I mean, we, this is all first time. So you want to show them? Yeah, Throw let's it. show them. So I depinned the connector here. Uh, I did chat with Bill a little while back before doing this, but depinned it. I have it on a 12 volt power supply and I'm going to just cut straight to the high setting. The low and medium are totally adequate. It feels yeah. like lots of air, yes. but I just wanted one handed moving. I'll just turn high on. It takes a second, but it is really blowing air. It is blowing them kind of here. Yeah. You, we have a scientific towel there. It's going to show where it's going to blow from. So move it to the middle and kind of see where the air flows at. It kind of dies off in the middle. So the idea with these vents is it's kind of coming up into the left here, up into the right there, with the idea being probably to have a nice film. I have no clue what I'm talking about. Film of air, sheet of air coming down and around this way. Um, but there's her towel. Let's see if she can find it. There it is. Just found it. Now move it up a little bit. So it's still there. Move higher. You need a ladder. She's starting to lose it there. Uh, so you can see it is hefty. Come all the way up front. It may get it, may not move yeah, around a little bit. A little bit. You may have to move like to your right or find the airflow. Wow. All right, definitely ready. Let me see. So I can feel it here. So I know it's coming. There it is. So I'm out here. Let's see. There it is. I am in front of the fuselage. That's amazing. There's the airflow for the left vent. From all the way back there. My and then the right one is right there. Pretty cool. And uh, sat in the back, it does blow in your neck. Uh, it's, back fasteners are gonna get hit with it. Um, but the way I see it is being able to be full blast like this, like taxiing around or down low, waiting to get up higher be full blast before we get up to the cool air. Once you're in the cool air, you got side vents. I'm gonna have an vent up here for fresh air. Um, so you'll have access to the wonderful lapse rate. Uh, but, happy? I'm so happy.